Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Sonia. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can investigate public Discord servers during an awesome investigation. Are you interested in knowing how online communities can be used to collect open source intelligence? We have another video on our channel where we discuss it. I invite you to watch that video. You can find the link to it in the description box below. Now, let's investigate a public Discord server. The first step is to set up your Discord account for conducting the investigation. Once you create an account, you will be assigned a unique username. A username typically has some text, followed by a hash symbol, and some numbers. Even if multiple users have the same string in the text section, the numerical sequence will be different, creating unique usernames. You can also set your status as invisible. When investigating a server, your name will not show up in the list of online users. Then navigate to Settings, Advanced, and Enable Developer Mode. Soon, you will get to know why this mode has to be enabled. Groups or online communities on Discord are referred to as servers. To investigate a server, you must become a member first. There are public and private servers on Discord. Anyone can join a public server. You can search for public servers on Discord or be provided with the server invite link by the owner. To join a private server, an invite is required. It is important to note that some invite links have an expiration value. That is, the invite link may be used only for a specific number of times. Anytime you join a target server, other members of that server will receive a message that you have joined. So it is important to ensure that your Discord username cannot be linked back to you. Currently, this account is a member of one server. All the servers you are a part of will be listed on the left. This is the target server. When you hover over the icon, you can see the server name. On the left pane, you can view the list of channels on this server. Channels are like subgroups on this online community. The channels have been grouped into various categories. These are the five channels in the server section category. By clicking on a channel name, you can view the messages in that channel. In the lounge channel, you can see the message that I have joined this server. By clicking on this icon, you can view the list of members on this server. A server would have administrators, users with special privileges and other regular users. Access control is implemented in Discord using roles. Here, you can view the list of users categorized according to the roles assigned to them. When you click on a name, you can view the Discord username, a small bio if the user has included it in their profile, their membership details, and the roles assigned to that user. Users who are actively using Discord will be displayed first. The small symbols in the profile picture indicates their status. Online, do not disturb, idle, etc. Only one user would have the crown symbol against their name. It represents the server owner. It is the account that was used to create this server. Every Discord server, channel, and user is assigned a unique identifier, referred to as Snowflake. The Snowflake contains the timestamp of when that resource was created. To find the unique identifier of this Discord server, simply right-click on the server name and select Copy ID. We can view the Copy ID menu option only because Developer Mode has been enabled. You can use converter tools like this one to convert the ID to a human-readable timestamp. It appears that the target Discord server was created on 31st December 2019. Let's find out when this .NET channel was created. I will copy the ID and paste it into the converter. The .NET channel was created in July 2022. For messages in a channel, you can view the exact timestamp the message was sent within this window itself. This timestamp is present according to the time zone your computer is operating in. 
Every message has a unique link associated with it. This is how the link appears. The URL discord.com slash channels is present, followed by three numerical components. Sometimes you may find links similar to this one on a target social media platform. This string contains some interesting timestamps. Let's use this converter. There are three timestamps in this URL. The first one represents when the Discord server was created. The second one represents when the channel in which this message is present was created. The final value represents when the message was sent. All the three timestamps are in UTC. On a Discord server, there would be a number of messages across all the channels. You can search through all those messages from the search bar. I will perform a search for the word Linux. You can find all the messages containing this search term. The newer messages are displayed first. You can also search for all messages sent by a specific user. If you know a user's Discord username, you can type it here. You can search for all messages in which a particular user have been mentioned. You can search for posts based on a particular date. Let's search for the keyword cybersecurity in the Python channel. You can practice using the different Discord search filters. They are very useful when you are investigating a target's activity on a server. You can click on this pin to view the pinned messages in a channel. You can also search and find messages of former server members. If you are aware of the Discord username of old members, you can use them in your search queries. You can construct search engine queries to enhance your awesome investigation. Discord server invites usually contain the domain name followed by slash gg slash some alphanumerical characters. You can search for Discord invite links using this standard string and other keywords. You can also search for Discord invite links in other social media platforms. If you have the link to a post on a Discord channel, you can search for other web pages containing the entire link or a part of the link. Here, we have a Discord username. We can search for profiles on other social media platforms using the same name. If profiles have been identified, you can conduct social media OSINT on them. We have a set of videos where we demonstrate investigating profiles on various social media platforms. You can find the links to the videos in the description box below. I hope you have a good idea now about how open source data can be collected from public Discord servers. Why don't you set up your own Discord account and investigate a public server? Practice helps sharpen your awesome skills. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon.